The Mountain Spirit's Curse This happened around the middle of the Holdeki era. There was a man by the name of Kanjuro, who worked as a samurai in the service of a noble lord. He had just recently turned 40, but for certain reasons was forced to leave his job behind. With much more free time on his hands, Kanjuro rented a house in the Rokuhara area and started writing theatrical screenplays for a living. This is a story he once told. When I was a samurai in my prime, I made many indiscretions, and I especially liked killing. One of my associates was another samurai who also enjoyed killing, and thus, being of like minds, we grew quite close. Every time we caught fish or birds, we would then share drinks together. One day, I was off duty, and so I asked my friend if he would like to go bird hunting with me. We set off around 2am in order to capture some birds at dawn, and quickly made our way towards Matsugasaki in the north. When we finally reached the mountain, we set nets in our usual spots, and then sat down beside a stone in the valley. There's still some time before dawn. Let's have a smoke. We took out a flint and burner, lit a fire, transferred it to the burner, and then started puffing on the pipe. As we puffed away, waiting for dawn to break, a single man in the distance suddenly approached us. The man was carrying a box lantern and looking around as though he had something to do. When he saw the two of us, his eyes narrowed as though wondering who we were. The crest on the lantern in his hands was that of our master. Who are you? we called out, and the man quickly rushed over. He was a colleague I knew well. Why are you here? Oh, I've been looking for you for quite some time now. The master said that something has suddenly come up and to fetch one of you two immediately. Bring one of them back right away, he said. Hearing that, I was surprised. Well, if it's urgent, then we must return right away. I'll gather the nets, I said and stood up, but my friend held me back. We went to all the trouble of setting them up, so you stay here and come back with whatever you catch. I don't know what this urgent matter is, but since he's only asking for one of us, I will return and take care of it. My friend returned at once with our colleague, and I sat back down by the stone all alone. It will be dawn soon, then the birds will come out, I thought, and started smoking again. Right around the time the birds should have started singing their morning songs, a peasant out for some farming curiously called out to me. Sir, why are you sitting all alone in such a filthy place? I looked around and as the sky in the east started to brighten, I realised that I was not sitting on a stone, but rather on a large pile of manure. The strength drained from my body. What happened to my nets, I thought, and when I looked, they had been torn apart and thrust into a chamber pot. Hmm, I guess I've been fooled by a kitsune or tanuki, I thought. What a pity. What will I tell my friend about the torn nets and lack of birds? What a complete loss of face this will be. But it was too late to do anything about that now. As I was preparing to go home, I noticed peasants carrying buckets of rice coming towards me at the foot of the mountain. But even more surprisingly, my friend, who had supposed to have returned home earlier that night, had a hand on one of the peasants' shoulders as they slowly pulled him towards me. I ran over to him and his clothes were covered in mud and his legs were covered in blood from various thorn scratches. You returned to help our master for urgent business, but what urgent business was it that left you looking like this? I asked in surprise. Well, when I heard that it was urgent, I intended to rush back to the mansion with our colleague, but he dragged me here and there all over the mountain without direction. Then he pushed me off a cliff into a muddy field below and disappeared. I finally came back to my senses, but it was too dark to see anything, and not only did I have no idea where I was, but I had no energy to go any further either. 
I had no choice but to sit where I was and wait. As the sky brightened in the east, these peasants came and helped me up. Truly, I am ashamed, he said, his face turning red. No, it wasn't just you. I was tricked as well. We were both astounded at the other's tale, but we couldn't stand around talking like that forever, so we finally made our way back to the master's mansion. Looking back on it, we often killed people in the mountains for no reason, so perhaps they came back to curse us. I decided I would never go back there again, and although I continued my bird hunting, I never once went back to Matsugasaki. The Midday Yokai. This happened in the seventh year of the Bunka era. There was a police officer who lived on an estate in the Hakusan Goten district of Edo by the name of Tsukamoto Didayu. He had only just recently moved, but he was a rather stingy man, and upon discovering a terribly ruined Inari shrine in the backyard, he destroyed it, claiming it was of no use and used the wood as kindling to heat his bath. On the day he burned the remnants of the shrine, an old woman walked through his gate seemingly from nowhere. Didayu asked the woman who she was, but she didn't answer. He told her to leave, but she didn't move. As such, he grabbed her and forcibly removed her from the premises himself, and then she disappeared. At that moment, Didayu's young son suddenly screamed from the rear of the house. Everyone rushed over and there found a rather large bald man of roughly eight feet standing there. Who are you? Didayu screamed. My staff, my sword. As he ran around looking for a weapon, the giant man transformed into a burdock root and then crawled under the veranda. All of this happened in broad daylight on November 20th. But in the days following, even more strange happenings occurred. A well-burning charcoal briquette was discovered atop a bed with smoke rising from it. The household tobacco trays were, for some reason, also discovered on the roof. A stack of firewood also mysteriously caught fire and turned to ash. Nidayu reported everything exactly as it happened to the local leader. Two of his colleagues then came to the house to observe, and one of them discovered traditional sandals scattered all over the tatami room that also happened to be covered in mud. The other saw a sword rise of its own volition to the roof, then drop back down and pierce the tatami mat floor. Nobody was hurt in the incident. Nidayu himself also saw a stone used to make pickled daikon covered in bran and rolling about in front of him. Naturally, this was quite the cause for concern. Nidayu asked a mountain aesthetic for help, and once the ceremony to cleanse the house started to heat up, the man snatched his cane and wrapped a cloth around his head. He was of no use. He then visited a temple helper in Hakusan and received a talisman, which briefly seemed to help, but then, the following day, things started to get strange again. Amongst all of these terrifying happenings, Nidayu entrusted his frightened son to some relatives. However, he was returned the next day, because the strange occurrences followed him too. It was uncertain who suggested it, but someone suggested that they eat some fox meat in an attempt to quell the strange incidents. And so, every single person residing in that house ate fox meat. Perhaps in fear of this act, nothing happened for the next four or five days. One day, the town guard was looking at the Tsukamoto household from across the way when he saw a short Buddhist nun walking around the family's hedges. Then, suddenly, a fire broke out. Those nearby panicked and managed to stop the fire, but at 10am on December 26th, A fire roared from the roof of the house, and before long, the entire building burnt down. This yokai does not appear at night. It's a strange being that always appears between early morning and evening.